Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I do uh, some studies of my work or whatever. Let me take this uh, live transparency off. So I created this background canvas uh, just to paint on. I like doing this where I don't paint against just flat white. Uh, you've probably seen that in some of my other videos if you watched the channel before. Uh, but if you're new here, then that's, uh, that's what I do here. I just kind of block in this a uh, variety of textures and stipples and you know dabs of brushes whatever uh, just so I'm not painting against flat white and uh, I'm probably gonna make some of these background templates like this available on my gumroad and it'll be just you know pay what you want or just grab them up if you don't got anything to throw at it no big deal so at any rate um, what I'm gonna do here is show you how I would use let's see where's my chalk line brush right here and I'm going to draw out some studies so uh, lately I've been wanting to do like some dragons and stuff like that and I'm not the best dragon artist uh, you know I'm always pr uh, trying to get better at that because you know I want to be good at certain things dragons one of them I'm not particularly the best at it now but it doesn't mean I can't be great at it later or at least semi decent or something <laughs> so uh, what I want to show you is how to go about doing particular studies now Obviously, we, we don't have a lot of re, uh, reference shots of dragons unless you're looking at other people's work, which isn't a bad thing uh, for inspiration and, uh, you know, figuring out ideas and stuff. But you always want to change it and put your own flair on it. So the best thing for that is going to be reptiles, uh, alligators, um, you know, it, just whatever. I mean, there's, there's even parts that you can take from different animals uh, and combine them together. I, I think that a lot of the coolest dragons... Uh, seem to have elements of a few different animals uh, and that's what makes them look really you know mystical and, and cool and all that fun stuff so what I want to show you here is how I'm looking at a picture of a, um, uh, a reptile and forgive me I'm not showing the photo of the picture uh, the image because uh, I don't know who the image belongs to you know sometimes uh, photography has rights uh, the photographer has rights to that picture it's not just a free uh, picture on the web or whatever so Instead of getting into all that hoopla and worrying about it, I'm just going to look at my opposite screen and just do a study from it. Um, you know, that way I'm not treading on anybody's property or whatever like that. You know, which to me almost seems silly because it's just a it's a shot of an animal. Uh, but I get it as the artist, as the photographer, they took the time to set up that shot, labored through it. Who knows how many countless days, hours, all that stuff. So I do I do understand it, but um. When it comes to recreating and, and doing an art piece, I think it should somehow maybe bypass that, but whatever. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of studying it, and I'm just scribbling it first, just trying to get like some basic ideas from it. And, you know, I'm not doing a verbatim uh, study, but I am taking certain elements and keeping them the same. Like, for instance, I like how on the picture I'm studying the scales kind of trace the eye like this. And one of the things that I think is really cool to note with like lizards and reptiles and then you can translate this into your dragons or fantasy art or whatever is that the the scales the different size scales almost act as um, defining characteristics to you know like the cheekbone or maybe the nose or the brow or whatever so you can change the size of these scales and really kind of define uh, parts of the the uh, creature and you can use that as a very cool design element. So just keep that in mind that, you know, if you're really trying to push the effect that he has this really neat, uh, you know, deep brow or something, something that you think is really cool on your creation, you can enhance that with the, the way that you do the scales. Uh, and then, you know, like something I'm noticing from the picture I'm looking at is that not all the scales even on the same creature are the same. So you don't want to like make the mistake of making all of the scales this kind of blocky style like I'm doing right now uh, you can mix it up and you can uh, like for instance on this particular one there's actually a defined eyelid which I think is kind of neat so I'm gonna put that in right here and then you know you'll even get uh, wrinkles within that too so you want to get those in and what I would say uh, at least the way that I do it is I would draw in the major shapes first so the wrinkles uh, the change in a let's say there's a bigger wrinkle or change in the uh, shape to the maybe a cheekbone or something like that a ridge line there uh, so I'd get those in early on and you know say the brow comes up here and shapes down 
um, which almost looks a little bit more frog-like, um, you know, or whatever, but you know, something like that. And then what I mean about changing the scale size is up here, you could not only change the scales uh, to be very large, you could also change the, the shape of them. So maybe they come down to a bit more of a point uh, like this. Let me see if this will work. And always remember that it's be very open to change, especially in this stage of your your creation process. Uh, that's how you'll you'll come up with your your best ideas, in my opinion. Uh, don't feel like anything you put down has to be immediately correct, and then just just be very open to change. Let your imagination kind of take control, and uh, and be very you know. Uh, quick to make adjustments because that's sometimes uh, at least me anyways that's how usually I'll get my best work I don't often get my best idea down first um, uh, not to be you know uh, confused with you know sometimes you you want to go with instinct and sometimes your first idea can be a good one um, but I don't know at least with my creation process Oftentimes, I'll redo something and it'll get better uh, each time. Not every time, but, but that's where having an eye for this really, uh, you know, matters. You know, being able to see when the changes are, are for the good or for the worse and, and stop and, and reanalyze. And, and that's where stopping when you're creating, like, you know, stopping, stepping back, you know, going like this and, and zooming in and flipping it. Uh, you can go to flip here, you know, just kind of analyzing the work uh, as you're designing it is, is really essential as well. So I think this is going in the right direction for what I want. And again, you know, there can be a multitude of designs in the scales. So these ones I tried to have a little bit more of a point. These ones more straight and almost like they almost remind me of bricks to a building or something. And then you can also do some like rounded ones, maybe where the... Uh, the change in, in shape for the wrinkle here would be um, you know you, you probably don't want to get too out of control uh, as the as I'm studying the uh, the photo that I'm looking at I am seeing about a good three to four different uh, scale types in just the eye area okay so now let's say that this this wrinkle back here is a larger one like this and then it breaks off like this. We get something like that. So I can predefine that uh, that area that I want to see, and then I can think about the uh, the way that I want the scales to go back. Now maybe I want them to elongate just a little bit. And I'm almost picturing like uh, like fish uh, scales. And you know, and that's another thing that you can combine. You can really combine anything with your your dragons. Uh, you know, and, and animals of uh, fantasy type creation or whatever. Uh, but man, I think fish and reptiles are probably the two coolest to really combine. They have such neat features and uh, just a multitude of things to pull from uh, when it comes to reference uh, from all the cool, you know, aquatic photos and, and plant life and you name it. So there's just tons of great ideas and all of that to reference. And that's really the point of this uh, particular episode. I just want to show you that when you do studies like this, it really opens your mind to what you could create. You know, it's so easy to get complacent and draw the same things over and over again. And this is kind of how you beat that. You know, it's how you uh, reinvigorate yourself and, and get new ideas for what's out there. And, and nature's perfect for that. Even if you're like, uh, like me and you like the science fiction fantasy side more than uh, realism uh, you can still pull from the realism around you and, and make some really amazing stuff so you know he's got this, uh, this creature's got these multiple tones and a lot of times in the eyes they have all these crazy shapes and tones and texture and I would probably do most of this with color but I'd throw in just a little bit of hints in the line work uh, what I look at it like with this is I'm giving myself reference uh, to remember, you know, because if I leave it blank, I might come back to the piece and do something entirely different. So even with the lines, I'll do just little hints of what I was referencing when I did the study. 
Okay, now one of the reasons I like to paint on a on a off background like this as well is I can drop in another layer, put it behind the line work, and I'll grab the same brush but more of a painterly style chalk painter brush right here. And uh, shameless plug time, you can get uh, all these brushes on my Gumroad. Sorry, folks, had to do it. Had to do it. Okay, so I get in here and I can paint this in. And I'm just going to use light and dark, but what I want to do, actually I'll start with the dark, to tell you the truth. I think it'll be better. Um, let's go to the dark here. I don't want it completely dark, but... Yeah, that's even a bit heavy. Let me let me drop down the opacity. Uh, which really, uh, you know what, it's, a, it's on its own layer. Let me just do this. This is like easier to me. Like, it's on its own layer. Just fill it in pretty dark. Like so, because then you can be like messy about it. You don't gotta worry so much. Like that. And then just drop back your opacity where you want to see it. I just want enough to where the, the white highlights that I'm gonna add in right now are gonna uh, show. So I can get in here now and I can, you know, just really punch it up a bit and add a bit more uh, effect in there. And the reason I like doing the studies this way is it gives me, even if I'm going to do line art, um, it gives me just a better visual representation of what I was seeing in the study. So, you know, I've got this depth on the eye, and really, I forgot to put as much um, depth on the eye right here. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to punch up the highlight up here, just a little bit on the overall area first, and then I'll get in and do like, you know, a little bit on each scale or whatever. And then I'll come back with a shadow on the bottom because one of the things that I'm noticing is this, this uh, you know, their skin is so so thick. They have this nice heaviness to the, you know, the weight of the uh, top eyelid. So you want to get that in there. It's the same reason why I put the shadow right here on the uh, iris part is because you want that that depth there. You know, that's where you're gonna get the the cool, you know, rounded, spooky, cool looking eye or whatever. I just say cool twice yeah that's pretty bad okay and then you know you take the brush real light and kind of punch up those little shapes that I was seeing in the iris and, and again I'm not trying to do a full finished painting here as much as I'm just trying to give myself cliff notes uh, so we want to come back and I, I look at this I can remember where I was at with doing this piece and and all the while um, right now it's giving me good uh, information for when I want to do my dragon painting. So I'll remember this when I go to do my uh, my new design. And, uh, and I'll do a few of these. It's not something where I'll just do one and say, okay, I'm ready to paint a dragon. You know, um, I might study the wings from a bat. I might, uh, uh, what else? The legs I could probably pull from um, uh, a lion or something like that, or, or bits of a lion and, and legs of a reptile. So you just mix those things together and then hopefully come up with a pretty cool uh, fantasy art piece. At least that's the way I would do it. I don't know if that's the right way or just a way, but that's the way I would do it. And plus I just have fun doing this stuff. So, so yeah, I'm not going to get in here and do every scale, but you see that's how it would kind of bump up the uh, texture of it. And you see I'm doing a little bit of shadow in between the scales when they line up like that. So like maybe there's a heavier shadow here. And then like I did with the eye right here, I would think about, okay, uh, there's probably a big shadow right here. I guess I could look at my reference. But yeah, it doesn't really... I even changed uh, from the reference uh, to what I'm doing now. So I've already started to add elements of my own design into it. Um, which is another reason why I didn't want to really show the, the pick, but really mainly for the, the reason I explained before. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it just, it's just something I'm going to change as I go anyways. But I'm trying to keep a few bits of uh, information from the, uh, the study. So yeah, get in there, just little bits of shading in there. You know, and you know if you you do this type of stuff, it takes a little while to do every single scale there. But whatever you're, whatever you're after, it's cool. 
Okay, so there's that. Let's say, you know, and I could get in here and drop in some color with some color mode layers and things like that, but I'm, I'm not going to. I'm just going to do a little bit more. And I think actually up here I want to just drop the opacity. And I could mix in some soft brush as well just to uh, make it look a little bit more accurate. But I try to do as much with a more of a hard brush at first and then just bring the soft brush in at the end and uh, do any blending or whatever. Now the other thing I'll see on some of the scales, I don't see too many of them on this reference I'm looking at, but it does happen. Another thing you can do is you can put little bits of rim light on some of the scales, probably the bigger ones. I don't know that you'd want to do this on every scale, and you don't have to keep it to all one side. Light does bounce around, but you could just do a little bit of it just to kind of punch up some details, and you could do a couple little specular kind of marks as well. You know, and that's that's all preference. I'm not seeing that on the reference so much or anything like that. It's just ideas that, uh, again, I would like those little dots. I would see that more on something, I think, aquatic or just depending on the way the light source is on the, uh, the you know, the uh, study or the material you're doing. Uh, but those little those little highlights can really uh, bump up the depth of something, and it can also give you a nice focal point. So you can. Put those, uh, put those, <laughs> put those strategically <laughs> through your design uh, sometimes, and really, really direct the viewer. Love how some days I just cannot talk. Okay, so let's see. Let's let's check this from a distance. Actually, let me get a little bit more highlights in the uh, in the eye, especially at the bottom, because what I picture is that the uh, the light is more abundant the bottom part of the iris and then as it comes to the top it'll dissipate because of that nice heavy shadow there and sometimes you'll get this nice uh, strong highlight well actually I'll add that in afterwards here again just kind of dance around with the highlights just kind of highlighting and texturing at the same time Let's uh, see down here maybe. You see I'm kind of bouncing around because I don't want to get in the habit of putting a highlight on everything. And it's real easy to do, especially with scales, because there are all these little individual segmented areas. So you think that it makes sense to put a highlight on every single one, uh, in which you could as long as it's not the same intensity highlight. You know, you just want some variation in what's going on there. Light doesn't uh, react that way where it's the same on everything. So it'll appear to look really fake uh, really quickly. So you just want to, you know, just slowly build up, you know, slowly work up your uh, your shapes of shadows and your highlights and things like that. Okay, and then finally on this particular one, you know, seeing if I pull back, it's starting to, you know, starting to look a little more dynamic. It's still got a ways to go, but this is a study, so I wouldn't recommend spending too much. Uh, time on this type of stuff you know you just want to get a bunch of them done and and learn you know it's all about uh, learning from your your particular study that you're doing so let's go ahead and do one more layer on top of the line work uh, this is usually where I'll punch up the the last few highlights so let's try like sometimes we get this nice strong uh, reflective glare it always seems to be right on the top of the eye right here even where the shadow part is which is Kind of strange to me, but it's the way that it is. Notice this when you study uh, study eyes quite a bit, and it's usually just well, it is just the reflection of the scene. So if you can try to get in some little elements of you know some branches or something or a scene of some kind, it'll make a little more sense. Um, and I'll generally paint this in with a solid. Get some dark reflective surfaces in here as well. And then drop the opacity a little bit and then take a soft brush and that's already on soft brush cool 
and then just fade like the sides out because you're you're trying to reinforce that it's a rounded eye. You know, so let me pan back. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. I don't know. Didn't come out as good as it normally would or should, but uh, hopefully you get the idea there. Uh, so you're trying to reinforce the fact that it's rounded basically by softening up your sides. So again, this is just more of a study, so I'm not going to worry about it being too awfully correct. But uh, you know, maybe punch up the uh, let's see the white highlight on the very front of it again to reinforce that roundedness, and then you can go through and maybe just do some couple little stronger highlights right at the very end because uh, again you're over top of your line work now so you can even touch up um, some of the line work or you can just you know just add those last little strong highlights wherever you see that they might be I don't know so yeah, so there it is. So that's how I would do a study of a reptilian type, you know, eye or whatever. And, you know, just keep going from here. You know, do, like I said, since I'm going to do a, a dragon piece pretty soon, I'm going to do some different reptile eyes. I'm going to do some bat wings. I'm going to do some legs from some, you know, very strong, uh, you know, creatures. And I'm going to try to combine those together and make something cool, uh, fantasy oriented, you know, so... Um, so yeah, that's just my way of studying and how I would incorporate nature into the stuff that I do. Uh, like I said, if you like the backgrounds, I'll make sure they're available on my Gumroad. And I uh, appreciate you watching the videos. If you can, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And let me know in the comments section below what you thought of this video and what you'd like to see in the future. And I always uh, try to listen. I try to comment back on everything that I can, but it's getting a little harder as the channel progresses. But I do what I can, and I definitely try to read through everything. So... Thanks very much for all your support. We'll talk to you soon. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.